Now let's cover the aspects of cabling. From an engineering point of view, cabling is a major factor in terms of voltage drop. The longer the cables, the bigger the, the, the drop is. The smaller the diameter of the cable, the bigger the voltage drop is. So PV modules are usually mounted on the roof, while inverters are often mounted in the basement or closest to the feed-in meter. We need the inverter to be close to the feed-in meter. Why? Because first of all, they send the major AC lines with the highest power on them to the grid. And because of the highest current and highest voltage, it's the biggest voltage drop. And we, want to don't, we, would, we don't want to lose power after we invert the DC on the way to the AC grid. We want whatever we inverted to send to the grid. Minimum of voltage drop on the way. This is why the cables, the AC cables coming out from the inverter, should have large diameters in order to minimize the voltage drop and make them as short as possible. Now, PV cables should meet the following requirements. And this is very important because no matter what we produce in the panel and what is the efficiency of the inverter, the cables in between create a loss and we want to minimize this loss. And in order to minimize this loss, we have to have a weather UV resistance cable. The cable should withstand operating temperature of minus 40 to plus 125. Later on, we'll see the effect of temperature on the voltage drop of the cables. Up to 1000 V, depending on application of withstand of voltages. Flame retardant, of course. Halogen free, in, when, we have, when we need to improve the, five, the fire and self-extinguishing. Should resist acid and alkaline and should have short circuit resistance at high temperature, 250 degrees C. Short circuit resistance mean that when we have a short, which is a spike, very high current, a very low, short amount of time, a pulse, that cable should withstand that, even in very high temperatures. Because that, very sp that spike with a tremendous amount of energy creates tremendous amount of heat at that particular time it appears. It had to have a small outer diameter in order to save space. Now, especially in agricultural operations, when we have PV systems in agricultural land, the cables should withstand and resist ammonia gases, oxalic acid, caustic soda, and all other chemicals in, in agricultural areas. Also, it should withstand damages that can create by various animals. Now, cable distributions. There are two ways, correct and incorrect ways, of distributing the cables on the DC side. We see on the left hand side a correct way of running the cables under an array to connect all the panels together. We look at all the panels in one row. We connect them in series, one with each other. We connect the second row, one to each other, and then we combine the two rows together, only very close to the junction box. The wrong, the right picture, the wrong way, is looking, is taking the first row and continue to the second row and increasing the magnetic field that these cables basically create. And we want to minimize the magnetic field because we want to minimize the, couple, the, the coupled over voltage that is being generated because of the magnetic field. Now, cable cross-section. 
as a target, we would like to have the loss less than 1% because of the cables. So we want, ideally, the large cable cross-section at the shortest possible cable length. That's the, that's the ideal. And we have two sides. We have the DC side and we have the AC side. Now let's continue go a little bit deeper into the cable cross-section. Now when we look at the technical specification of a cable, we have several parameters that we should pay very careful attention to. Number one, the cross-section. The strength design. How many small, tiny wires will, will, be, will make up the entire conductor? The entire conductor diameter, the outer diameter of the cable itself, the internal conductor resistance, which is mer mer uh, measured in ohms per kilometer length of cable, the rated voltage of the cable itself, and the rated current, of course, of the cable itself. So if we look at the left column, the types, we see the part number, basically, PV-1- we know the cross-section, we know how it consists of, made of, diameters, and the resistance per kilometer. It's especially significant in large areas, when we have many kilometers of cables running through the system. And again, we allow only maximum of 1% of voltage and power drop because of cabling. And these two formulas, one for copper cables and one for aluminum cables, are taken into consideration, into account, when we calculate losses. And there are several computer programs called cable loss calculators to calculate really effectively how much is the loss because of the cables. We draw the array, we divide it in on the calculator, we divide it into strings, we specify the panels, therefore the I and the V and the P of the panels, so we know the current. Using these cable loss calculators will enable us to minimize the loss because of the cabling. So what I would like to share with you is the fact that there are calculators that calculate cable loss, which goes together with computer programs that design arrays of PV systems in order to minimize altogether the entire loss of the system. And this is a very good example of a junction box. And remember, we're still looking at the cables. On two sides of the junction box, we see the cables from the arrays. And the diameter of the cables, relatively speaking, smaller than the main DC line, two cables, plus and minus, coming out of the junction box. So please consider the difference in the diameters of the input cables coming from the array to the output cable plus minus coming out of the junction box. That's a very good example that one should follow.